Or well, straight on to the papers. Dipti is with us, and Dipti is starting with the European parliamentary elections, voting uh, kicking off today in the UK and in the Netherlands as well. Yeah, that's right. Let's start with the Netherlands, though, where um, uh, Politico has uh, penned an article looking at how the far right leader there uh, are expe is expected, to, or the party of the far right is expected to come. First in those elections, that's the far-right Forum for Democracy party, led by 36-year-old Thierry Baudet, whose uh, his party is already the largest I itself in the Dutch Senate. Now it's set to perhaps eclipse Prime Minister Mark Rutte's party in the European elections, and perhaps join what what many are uh, expecting to be a surge of populist parties making their way into the EU Parliament. Uh, critics say Baudet's sophisticated airs mask an extreme uh, extreme right views. He's opposed, for instance to combating climate change. He admires Viktor Orban, the Hungarian populist leader. He's fiercely anti-Islam and anti-migrant. Um, his party's ultimate goal, holding referendums for a possible nexit, an, uh, an exit of the Netherlands from the EU. In the Dutch paper uh, Telegraph today, uh, the European elections are indeed a civic duty and a must, but this writer says they are also a sham because people are not voting really for the representatives in practice. The Faces are not the faces we, we vote for. Nevertheless, there are pleas in a lot of the papers, aren't there, for voters to choose Europe in these elections? That's right, especially to combat this rise of the far-right um, parties in Europe. This is from the editors of Le Ton, the Swiss paper, uh, which says the EU must protect itself because, I quote, a stable and democratic union is better than a profiteering disunion. Uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, the president of the European Commission, has warned against apathetic voters in the Irish Times. I quote, he writes, we must fight populists where they're weak, with actions, not words, with hope, not fear, with unity uh, over division. He advocates, of course, a U united Europe in standing up to uh, tech giants, to securing external borders and fighting plastic pollution, uh, standing up to foreign influences as well. That's, a, that's actually the subject of this cartoon, um, a rather cynical one from Die Volks, current a Dutch paper, which sees European leaders as small fish, weak, huddled masses facing off against the giant sharks of China and Russia. Well, Lord Deputy has also been looking at the latest reactions to the latest Brexit turmoil. This is just one of them uh, in the Times of London. May prepares to quit, saying she's going to go tomorrow. Actually, the Times are, aren't they? That's right, and that's probably the, the softest headline we've mm. seen from the British dailies today. Uh, it comes, of course, after Theresa May's own uh, senior cabinet minister, Andrea uh, Leadsom, quit on Wednesday over her new Brexit deal, a deal that's infuriated both the opposition and May's own party. The Daily Mail calls it the end of the road. She's also, Theresa May's also expected to get a drop in these European elections, uh, the Daily Mail predicting that she'll announce her resignation uh, imminently after months of digging in her heels. The Daily Mirror has actually rehashed one of its old headlines, uh, hence why it's tears in the backseat too. The first headline uh, came out in 1990 uh, during the time of Margaret Thatcher when she was facing a, a similar period of stress. Uh, May has reached her end game uh, here as everyone abandons her, the Daily Mirror says, and uh, it's also the focus, of course, of cartoons. Um, here she is, uh, Theresa May, as a robot, reading about her own Brexit drama uh, and the news that British Steel has gone into liquidation, but it's quite literally the case for this cartoonist here. And the Independent, speaking of uh, an impasse for the Prime Minister. Yeah, the Independent says uh, Theresa May is utterly snookered. She's got nowhere to turn. Her deal is dead in the water. I quote, she tried to please everyone and ended up satisfying no one. Let's change the topic then. Daily Beast, uh, they're looking at a new medical invention. Yeah, kind of. If you see it here, you'll be wondering what on earth the earth toilet has to do with medical inventions. But researchers at the Rochester Institute of Technology have been looking at how to better diagnose people with congestive heart failure. The problem being that people with uh, heart disease are bad at monitoring their own health, leading to relapses. So they've come up with a way to monitor heart activity without anyone needing to put in an effort. Mm. They've uh, fitted these toilet seats with um, three instruments that measure heart activity, heart rate and heart, uh, heart rate and weight uh, uh -huh. to send a warning when uh -huh. they're at risk of heart disease. Good idea, why not? <laughs> finally from Dick T, uh, Londoners, apparently they're in need of some better glasses, uh, in rather <laughs> a frenzy it appears, after discovering that a pop star has been living amongst them for a year 
discreetly. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, pretty bit <laughs> successful uh, uh, move from Come Rihanna, the pop star. Rihanna. This year, yeah? She okay. revealed uh, in an, uh, an interview to a newspaper that she's been living in London for the past year because she's preparing to, of course, launch her Fenty fashion label here in Paris, and she's right. managing her successful Fenty beauty line. Uh -huh. uh, also, um, uh, products in Paris and in uh, also in Italy. So she said being in London was easier for her to manage those business ventures. Her fans, though, are shocked that they had no idea, not that they didn't really had a right to know anyway, um, but uh, also that she's gone totally under the radar, quote, yeah. walking around her local block, visiting a Jamaican grocery store and, you know, just Excellent. being normal. Good. And that's the most shocking part of it all. Yeah, I'm glad she was And she too. managed to do it successfully. I wonder how near she is to the Eurostar terminal then, if she keeps <laughs> coming over here all the time. Perhaps she's been wandering down our stream, we haven't noticed. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you very much, Steve with the papers on France 24.